What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna ask the all important question, is the king dead? It's no secret that when Flare launched, they began kind of a renewal of interest in lever machines at home. And it seems to be the barometer with which we measure everything else on the market. No king, no monarch lasts forever. Is it time that this one falls? Well, I've got two competitors right now that I'd like to take a look at in today's video, and we'll see if the king has been dethroned. So today we're gonna take a look at two recent contenders, which is the Supercop Espresso Machine and the MHW3 Bomber Sonic S7. But before we get into that, here's a short segment from today's sponsor of the video, BetterHelp. Now I've been very open about this online. I struggle with mental health. For the longest time, I never really sought out help and things kind of escalated over the years. And so finally I decided to go and get some and this is where BetterHelp can come in, at least it did for me, and it can help you as well. By answering just a few questions on their app, you'll get paired with a therapist that you can kind of see if that works for you, and then you begin your sessions. This will give you 10% off your first month using the service. So if you are someone that's been considering getting help with your mental health, consider checking out BetterHelp. Now I have a discount code below for 10% off your first month. If you go to www.betterhelp.com slash Lance Hedrick, you'll get that discount for the first month and you can try it out and see if it works for you. Now, of course, every time that link is clicked, it does help the channel. So I just want to be fully transparent with that. But anyway, thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring. Let's continue on with the video. Now it is important to make a quick disclaimer with some of these machines. Now the M HW3 Bomber, I did get for free from them in order to review. Then this was before I made my video announcing I was buying everything. I got the shipment confirmation before the new year began and it took like eight weeks to get here. Now as for the Supercop, I got it right after the expo in Milan last year. So I've had it for quite a few months. Both of these units will be going to someone on my Patreon through competitions. So I won't be keeping them. But now let's start the showdown. Two different approaches in how they're making espresso, but two very solidly built machines. They both sit around $800 or so, whereas the Flare 58X is closer to 500, the 58 with the heating element is around 600. You must outperform it pretty well in order to call for a higher price tag. So first we're gonna take a look at the Sonic S7. You may already recognize this company. They're known for making a lot of accessories for espresso preparation and things like that. They came out with their own original type of design to offer the Home Barista a direct lever machine. So this is constructed of 304 stainless steel, aluminum alloys, and then there's some silicon and obviously we see wood. We have a lever right here. When you lift, it fills the chamber with the water and when you go back down, it presses it. So it's a similar mechanism to the Flare 58. Where there's a piston inside, there are holes in it. That is one way. So when you lift up, the water goes through, you push down, the water is pressed using that piston force. We have a manometer that's built in, which is a necessity these days, especially with direct lever machines in order to follow what you're doing so you can try to replicate your experience as well as dial in your coffee to specific profiles. It also comes with their tamper, which is a self-leveling tamper, and it has a rippled base. If you're curious about tampers, I got a video here you can check out. This little distributor, which um, you, if you're watching this channel, you likely know my thoughts on those, but we won't really get into it. You also get two different types of baskets, one that's heavily tapered, and then one that's kind of a bigger base basket that holds about 20 grams of coffee. Uh, and this little shot glass, which is actually a 58 millimeter diameter, kind of neat. Um, but yeah, you can pull your espresso into it. You can measure beans with it, whatever you want. You can get a stripped down version or you can get it one with the suit, the carrying case, which is a very welcome trend with more and more machines coming like that, starting with the decent espresso machine that kind of ships in a case, a suitcase. You have the Zerno, which comes in the Pelican case type thing. And they also offer something like that. So I got the one with the suitcase, but this is where things are a bit interesting. It's nice, it's quality, it's gonna hold it. It has all the foam inside, but who in their right mind has taken this on an airplane? There's a plane on it. And that word, I guess, what are you gonna do about it? You could probably just, you know, have your kid color all over it or something, spray paint it, do some graffiti work or something. So as you can see, it comes with all of the parts that are needed to make good espresso. When it arrives, it is essentially all built. You just have to screw in the handle right here. So there's a little thumb screw right here. You just screw it right on in and you're essentially good to go. What is the workflow on it? Honestly, it's very similar to that of a Flare 58. The brewing chamber is this hunk of stainless steel. You really need to preheat the mess out of it. Otherwise, it's just not gonna be very hot. And since there's no heating element here, it's all based on your kettle. 
I like on the flare, you have that kind of silicone wrap that helps retain some of the heat. This one, you don't have that, so it's gonna dissipate a bit quicker. So we're gonna go ahead, take a look at that. I'm obviously pulling out my thermocouple. We'll pull a shot and then we'll move on to the super cop. So mind you, I'm starting with this at room temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up and we'll see what the first pull, completely room temperature, what it does to the temp. So we lift this up. It sucks the water down really nicely, really efficiently. All of it's been sucked. Now we're gonna push down. We're at 64, 65. Looks like we're peaking at 65 before it starts to plummet. Now we're down to 62, 60, 59. It's just gonna stay at 59, it looks like. And then as this is going out, I'm gonna go ahead and reheat. All right, so we've done all the preheating. Now I'm just gonna release the water and then we'll fill it up and measure what it's like after this preheat. So here we are. Get all that out. Now we're gonna put this case back in like we're locking on our actual porta filter with coffee. And here we go. And start the push. So now we're at 83.2 with one preheat. So it looks like it may need a solid two full preheating sessions where you put boiling water in and let it sit in order for it to hit that 90 degree mark. This was obviously boiling water, so it should give us a little extra preheating. Then we'll put boiling water in one more time, read it one final time, and then we'll move on with an actual shot. So here we go, quickly. Time is of the essence when you're using these types of levers. So we lift, drop it in, and we go. This time we are at 83 again. This steel right here, it gets super hot to the touch. It's not double walled or anything. It, uh, it rapidly loses heat. So in order to really make sure you're getting the best of this, you really need to preheat a lot. Unless of course you're using a really dark roast, in which case one preheat will do fine. 83, 85 degrees is gonna be more than fine for a darker roasted coffee. All right, we've got our coffee ready. Let's go ahead and dose it into our port filter. Put this back down. We lift and we begin going up immediately to um, nine bar. We're going to chill here. And slowly descend. It's really weird pulling from behind the table, but we're doing a good job. Doing a good job. We're keeping that flow out at about one, 1 1.2 grams a second. And we're going to be done right now. And you lift to stop the plunger and you're good to go. It's not bad. First off, because the arm is so long, it's actually a bit easier to get that nine bar than on a Flare 58. Um, so it's a bit it's a bit nicer to get that. Before I knew I needed to preheat the absolute mess out of it, and before I knew that even doing that, I was still getting lower temperatures, something unique was happening when I was pulling my espresso. Immediately, the bottom of the basket would cover and it would drip out really quickly for a few seconds and then it would almost like choke. And this actually reminds me of the experience when you're using pretty cool water to brew coffee. Now I'm thinking back on it, I was probably sitting at like 70 or 75 degrees Celsius when making that espresso. That water did not want to get through at that lower temperature. So higher temperatures, it does a better job. But what I have noticed is there's a bit of a lack of body maybe because I'm using lighter roast and it's doing a, a cooler temperature. You also have standing water on top of the piston once you pull it back up and retract it. There's a decent amount. We have quite a bit of water that's just sitting up there that you can't really do anything with. It's been decent espressos, but when you're looking at that $800, $850 price point, I'm, I, I wish I didn't have to faff around as much. If you have one and you enjoy it, very valid. I'm glad you enjoy it. This is just me kind of giving my thoughts. Let's move on to the super call. We've had the spinny with the Aram. We've had the pump with the Pico Presso. We've had the Seesaw with the Unitera Nomad, which is still one of the goats in my opinion. A little video link right there from a few years ago. But now we have a new way of producing pressure. 
We still have a piston inside, but the way that the pressure is increased is using a ratchet system. It's a really neat, nifty thing. And in fact, I really like to watch it without anything there. So you're going down, up the rung, up the rung. And you see here's a piston with a gasket around it. It's all CNC milled stainless steel inside. And then we come to the top. Then when you pull back a little bit more, so satisfying. And it makes building pressure a whole lot easier on your arm. But of course there are downsides with it. Whenever you're lifting back up, you're obviously relieving pressure from the puck. So you get a pressure curve that kind of looks like this. This one is definitely lasting generations upon generations to come. The only real failure points in this would be the water cup where you place water. This is made from a food safe polycarbonate. I didn't, I couldn't find online if it was BPA free. I have to imagine it is because we have a lot of studies that show above 70 degrees that you're getting some leaching going on. Uh, but I've got to imagine it's BPA free if it's saying uh, food safe. It does, you know, no, no dishwasher. This could obviously be a fail safe over, over the years. So I would potentially buy multiple cups if you were you know, investing in something like this and wanting it to last decades. Because it's this plastic, you don't need to preheat. So similar claim to like the robot, no preheating. Of course, we're gonna put that to the test. And the other thing is just this wooden base. It can warp over time. It doesn't seem very well treated. Um, it's a bit difficult to rub espresso spurts off of it. Well, they do have a second option with the setup here. You can get it wall mounted. Now I actually love the wall mounted look. I know it's very polarizing. A lot of people don't like it, but when I was at the Mumak Museum, I saw this machine right here from FEMA. And I love the idea of sitting on a train back in the 60s or so, and you have the you know the person on the train come, you're like an espresso, they walk over and they pull it from a wall lever, which I think is so cool. And when I saw that, I was like, dang, I really want one of those. I wonder if I can find one to restore and mount somewhere in my house. I'm still on the look. So if you have a lead on one of those old famous, let me know because your boy will pick it up and restore it. But anyway, there's no real place for me to mount this. So I'm using just the wooden base, which gives a decent counterbalance for the pressure you're putting on the system. Another thing that you'll immediately notice is there's no pressure gauge. There's no manometer. How the heck are you supposed to know what pressure you're at? Well, thankfully, Microshat press sensor made a little prototype cup with a hole here to read pressure using his Bluetooth transducer. So the people at Supercop were kind enough to let me borrow it in order to run tests. They have no idea what I'm doing with it. They are planning on adding a pressure gauge in the coming months or year. I don't, I don't know the timeline to it, but they're trying to figure out a good place to put it. Really nice portafilters, filters, really heavy duty. And as you notice, there are no wings on it. There are no flaps on the side. You can get a spouted one. And yes, other baskets do fit in this. Come on, baby, ow! Here's a VST, for instance. And then if you switch the spring out, you can also get like the Swartz or a fancy basket to fit in. Then whenever you get your coffee ground up, you put it in the basket, you tamp it down. You just place this, which has its own gasket on it and its own built-in shower screen. You place it into the basket like so. It fits really snugly in there due to that gasket. Then you put water in here. They say there's a 60 millimeter limit, but honestly, I can get 50 to 55 mils in the cup if I go all the way. Um, so it's gotta be more than 60 because about, I don't know, 30 or 40 mils are being absorbed into the puck. I guess when they say a 60 mil limit, they're talking about on the scale. Have to get this piston all the way up. So you gotta do that fun little thing. And you just slide it directly in. There's no real good way to track what you're doing, but it seems that people are getting great shots regardless. So whenever I show you the Bluetooth reading of the pressure, don't be fretful thinking those variations in pressure is gonna negatively affect the coffee in a big way. A lot of people love the simplicity of it and the fact that it is so easy to create nine bar without going hard. But as you can imagine, especially for people like me who are crazy and have way too much muscle to know what to do with because I am as big as the rock, well, you're gonna overshoot the pressure pretty easily. Just know you need to go down smoothly and get a proper grind size. I will say, I think because of that, there's a pretty steep learning curve to it, but I guess it just depends if you get lucky with the grind size, if you have experience, whatever it might be. So now we're gonna test the temperature of this machine. Now I won't be able to be as precise as I was with this because the scase won't fit in here. We're gonna pour the water into the cup and we're gonna see what the temperature is inside the cup immediately. Obviously, whatever the temperature is in this, we, we're not going over regardless of what there is. So we know that the temperature is at its peak once it's in here, because then when we put it in, we're not increasing temperature at all. Yes, we'll increase the pressure, which I guess, guess could have a minor effect because pressurizing it can in increase the temperature, but in reality, 
it's not going to do too much. Now we need to take into account that this piston is stainless steel. So unless it's preheated, it's going to leach some of that temperature out. Even if there's an air pocket, it will still affect the temperature. So with boiling water, I just pulled off the boil and threw it in there. It's at 90 Celsius without any preheating at all. Down to 87 now. Yeah, so it does continue to drop. So speed is of the essence whenever you're doing this. So you wanna get that shot ready, tamped, place this on, pour it in and go as quickly as possible. So we've got the water back at boiling. We're gonna put it in this preheated cup and we're gonna take a temperature. Now we're at 92. It's already dropping though, we're at 91.5. So it looks like after one preheat, you can get up to about 92 degrees. If you are using really lightly roasted coffees, it's probably worth it to preheat it a bit, make sure the basket is hot and make sure the piston is hot as well. But other than that, even with lighter coffees, 90 degrees is sufficient as long as you're quick with your workflow. I often pull light roasted coffees at 90. I don't really think you really need to push the temperature too, too high. All right, we got our coffee tamped and ready to go. I've got my modified cup on here. Let's get our boiling water. Fill this bad boy up, lock it in. So you'll be able to follow along with my extraction and see how the pressure is with this ratchet system. So as you can see, there's that dip as I'm quickly filling up the puck with water. I did the first couple really quickly. My, my grind's a little tight right here. Don't really worry about that as much as watching the pressure. So this will just be a longer shot, but no worries. So we're just kind of living. And you see, I'm not really, I, I'm not having to push that hard. This ratchet system really makes it a lot easier. Their goal was to give something to where you wouldn't need like, you know, a one meter long lever in order to make an easy nine bar shot. So I'm dipping on the pressure. Let me go back up. I've read online that some people think each ratchet is going to give you like a consistent pressure just depending on your uh, grind size, but I've not found that to be the case. I can, I can push it really high if I want. You see that? I got up to 14 bar. And again, oh, we're on the next one. I can get up. Look at that. I can get up to 14. So that's the issue is if you think you need to push as hard as a flare, you're going to have some really wonky shots of coffee. And then you can kind of just live down here. But again, I can force it way up. I ran out of water. But that's what it looks like when you're pulling a shot. What is inevitable is in between each rung, you are going to lose pressure. No, it's not unseating the puck like a solenoid valve would. It's not sucking anything out. You're lessening the pressure momentarily as you're going to the next rung. That's why you saw I like to go quickly to minimize the amount of time that the pressure is dipped on the puck's surface. You're going strictly off of feel and the feel is not super accurate because every time it feels a little different. And that's just because you're going with this ratchet system, which is giving you kind of different angles, different torque throughout as you're going to the different ratchet levels. It can be a little confusing. That being said, this can give you incredible texture. It is very easy to use as far as pulling down the lever. It's kind of fun and novel. And honestly, I think it's a statement piece. I'm sure if you had this hanging on your wall, it would be the center of a, a slew of conversations. Always taste what you pull, even if it's not very good. And that is not very good. That being said, it's not super bitter. It's just really watery and kind of, I don't like it. makes it difficult to kind of remove the king. And you know what they say, if you're coming for the king, you best not miss. And even though I don't think these are misses as far as their place on the market and their, and their validity to many customers who want them or have them, I don't think that when we get down to the brass tacks and we're looking at bang for your buck as well as quality and all the things kind of put into one, the Flare 58X is pretty difficult to beat in terms of its performance, its quality, and its price. Sometimes you just want a coffee. This does the art, this does the good stuff. It gives you nice texture and there it is. The Sonic S7, while it does look pretty nice, I do wish that there was a little bit more thought put behind the, the chamber here for thermal stability because right now it just doesn't really have much thermal stability at all. It just rapidly loses heat. I enjoy the offset lever arm. I enjoy the build of it, the weight of it. I think both of these are great additions to the market in the sense that uh, it's gonna add some flavor and there are gonna be people who are very much drawn to either one of these. No, I don't think the king has been dethroned. The Flare 58 is here to stay a little bit longer, uncontested in my opinion. 
Yes, the lever is a bit more difficult to create the same pressure as these two, especially the ratchet system, but you have a manometer built in. You have the portafilter with the 58 millimeter that can be replaced with other ones. And you have the thermal heating element here. Even if you don't have that element and you have the X, this still has a great thermal stability due to this wrapping that's going on up at the top to maintain the heat really well. Do I love the Cafelat robot? Yes, and it's my choice to brew on. I prefer brewing with it. It is a more fun brewing method than the Flare 58. But if I'm doing a light roasted coffee, this reigns supreme. I'm just giving you my point of view. And so take that for what you will. I'm not endorsing anything to be bought. I am just telling you my thoughts on these machines because I think they're really cool and I love to play around with machines and share my thoughts on them. So that is kind of that. Thank you for watching up until now. Please check out my Patreon below because you know I'll be giving these things away uh, through competitions there. Uh, please, you know, check out my second YouTube where I do a lot of rant style things. You know, my Instagram, all those different things. Anywhere you want to support is greatly appreciated by me. Thank you so much. I hope that you brew something tasty today and cheers.